Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Now I'm going to talk to you today about adhesives for paper crafting because there are so many different ones available. This is just a tiny selection of what you can possibly use when you're gluing together things like your cards and your scrapbook pages. So I'm going to run through lots of the different types of adhesives, what they are best for using for, and also my top tips for using them as well. As always, if you love top tip videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and a thumbs up would be brilliant. So let's start with adhering panels onto your card front. So these might be your mats and layers, maybe it's a topper or something like that. So if you're using something that's a good heavyweight cardstock, you could use yourself a wet glue. But if it's slightly thinner, wet glue may warp the paper. So ideally, you want to go with either a double-sided tape or a foam tape. Now I've got some tips using foam tape. So we're just going to pop around the edge of our mat. Now get yourself a foam tape, ideally if you can, that will tear because this is going to save your scissors. So I'm going to go around the edge of the panel as you would. So I've gone around the edge as you'd expect and before I stick that on, I would advise definitely putting a piece of tape in the centre there. You don't even need to remove the backing off this one, but this is going to stabilise your panel. So when it's on your card, you're going to have stabilisation around the foam here. If you didn't have that middle bit, the middle would bow and it would make your card look less than professional. Now I tend to use something like a pokey tool to remove the backing, I just find that the easiest way and it saves my fingers and my nails. I just tuck the tip under the edge of the tape and lift up. Now after many years paper crafting I'm quite confident that I can turn this over, I just keep my fingers just underneath there so I don't press this down too far yet until I've positioned it where I want it but if you're not so confident in putting it down in the correct place first time you can now go along with something like a wet glue and this can be a clear one or a white one you can actually add wet glue to your foam so I'm just going to put a layer along each of the pieces and now when I push that down I'm going to have that wiggle room so I can move my layer about until I'm perfectly happy with it and once I'm happy, I can press that down and within a few moments, the glue and the foam are going to dry, giving you a dimensional layer in the perfect place. Now, if you don't want dimension on your card, I've got some tips for using double-sided tape. So I'm going to put another layer onto this card just with flat tape instead. So there's two sorts of tapes available. So there's one where the glue will go all the way to the edge and there's one called finger lift. Now I would always recommend finger lift if you can. This has a small line of tape which has no glue underneath it on each edge which makes it really easy for you to lift that tape up once you've glued everything down. So let me just show you. I'll just pop this down and most double sided tapes will tear. Some you do need to cut. I would always again go for a terrible one if you can. So the edge of this all the way along here I can lift up and this just makes it so much easier for lifting that backing off. But if you don't have finger lift here's a few tips for you. So I'm just going to place my tape down. Again I'm going to tear this one. Now sometimes what can happen is when you pull your backing up some of the tape starts to come with it. So a good way of making sure this doesn't happen is taking a scoring tool and just brayering that tape down so really press it down. It's going to adhere to the cardstock much better than that will adhere to the backing on the tape because the tape has a resistant surface. So now when we come to this side and we lift this up we've got it perfectly stuck all the way down. Now again if you want to you can apply a wet glue over your tape usually rather than removability people would do this just to give them extra strength. Perfect. Now wet glues are probably my go-to adhesive just because of the versatility of them. They can provide a really, really strong hold for many different materials, but you do of course have a little bit more of a waiting time for them to dry. So I've got a clear glue and I've got these two both have a white wet glue. These are going to dry clear as well. Now as you can see, I have got a tube which has a pin in the top. I always have one of these handy because this helps with really intricate things like small gems and tiny die cut pieces. 
So with white wet glue and a clear glue, there's really not a great deal of difference. I find the clear glue is a little bit stronger, but it is a little bit smellier. So if you're not keen on fumes, that's maybe not one for you. With any wet glue, I would always suggest after you've been squeezing the glue out of the top and you've finished, rather than putting the cap straight back on with all that glue still in there, ensure you allow the glue to flow down to the bottom of the bottle again, just for a few moments and just gently squeeze some air in and out of the nozzle, just the nozzle here, just allowing that to dry out and make sure there's no glue still sitting in there and then put the lid on. This is just going to keep that clear and try to store that upright as well to keep the nozzle clear from glue while it's away. And when you've got something intricate like this, it's really hard to know which adhesive to use because of course you're not going to be able to use a tape on it. You want to give it a really good full coverage, but it's going to be extremely fiddly and time consuming. But if you use this tip, it's going to make it much quicker. I'm going to use a wet glue and I'm just going to put a little bit onto a resistant mat here. And I'm going to brayer this until I've got a nice smooth, thin layer and then I'm going to take this glue on my brayer and brayer it onto the reverse of my intricate piece. So this is a doily in this case but it could be something like a die cut. Now because this is thin this is starting to curl up but that will happen with any adhesive so just try to keep that nice and flat and try to keep your paper or your die cut on part of your mat that hasn't got any glue on to avoid getting glue on the front. So once that's completely covered, we can now stick this to our card and we have perfect coverage there. So that's a subtle background for me. But of course, if that's a bolder die cut, that would work equally as well. Don't forget, of course, to rinse off your briar and your mat straight away, though. Now another tip when using wet glue, whether you're using a fine applicator or not, definitely less is more. If I was to put this much glue onto a, a small die cut piece, for example, and press this onto my project, I'm just going to get glue seeping out of the sides there and it really does not look good. So with something as intricate as this, I would just put tiny little dots all over the die cut. I would not do one long line, this is just going to create too much and I'm barely even squeezing any glue out of the nozzle. I start with some glue coming out and then I just use that and spread it around in tiny little spots. That is enough to prevent that excess glue seeping out of the edge that you can get sometimes. Now hot glue is definitely my go-to for sticking bigger and heavier items such as my paper flowers. Certainly when things are dimensional or they have things like ceramic, wood or even metal on them. It just makes them hold much quicker and much more solid. So I'm going to use my Sizzix glue gun. Uh, I've got quite a few different brands of glue guns. I really, really love this one as you can see by how dirty it is. Now I'm going to show you a little tip for rather than applying your glue directly directly to your flowers for example. What you can do to just make this process a little bit easier, a little bit neater for you and less risk of burning yourself as well when you're pressing down items with the hot glue. This is a great tip and something that you can actually prepare in advance and it's ideal if you find that you often apply too much hot glue to your projects and ruin them with all those unsightly glue strings. So I'm going to use a heat resistant non-stick mat and once my glue gun is warm enough I'm going to place a few small glue dots onto the mat and I'm going to allow those to fully cool which should take two or three minutes. Once cool these should just flick off your mat really easily and if you want to you can even trim them down to size if they're a little bit large. Now when it comes to placing these on my project, I'm going to pick each one up and put it whereabouts I'd like my embellishment. So just sit it on there and I'm going to use a heat gun and just gently warm that up. As soon as that has remelted, you can press your embellishment into it and you can guarantee you have no glue strings and the perfect amount of glue in just the right place.
Now red liner tape is absolutely perfect for adhering things like acetate where you don't want the uh, tape to be seen through but it's also great for holding things strongly so something like a shiny material like acetate does sometimes need a little more grip. So red liner tape as I say is really great for this but it doesn't tear so you do need to use your scissors. So for this my top tip is definitely to use yourself a pair of scissors that you keep only for cutting glues and tapes this way you're not going to ruin any of your other scissors they will become sticky over time but you can use wd-40 to clean them again definitely brayer down your red liner tape to ensure it's stuck as much as possible to the material and not the backing of the tape and I'll always try to put my tape underneath a pattern or piece of detail on the clear acetate if that's what I'm sticking so that it's even less likely to be seen. Perfect. Lastly, Glossy Accents isn't technically known as a glue, but I find it absolutely fantastic for not only drying clear and, of course, glossy, but it also has a really, really strong grip and it has a nice fine tip as well. So it is another fabulous adhesive to have in your stash. So we'd love to know in the comments which of these adhesives are your go-tos and do you have any tips for using them as well. Thank you for watching everybody. Don't forget of course to subscribe to the Craft Stash YouTube channel so that you can keep up with tips and tutorial videos like this and we think you'd also really like this video just here. Take care everybody. See you again very soon.